in this question we all have about improving stage three outcome and potentially giving something after radiochemotherapy in the patient who are not surgical patients, right? Patients who have received radiotherapy for any kind of decision-making process. Um, the immunotherapy might look very attractive. It might look very attractive mainly because of the biology underlying this strategy. We have been showing since a while in other diseases, mainly melanoma, but also in preclinical models, that when you deliver radiotherapy and also chemotherapy, you really induce a cancer cell death, which might somehow activate the immune system already. Uh, this, uh, some, some pieces of the, of the cells dying are presented to the immune system and start to create something like a vaccine uh, against the tumor. Uh, and if you can really mount this immune response or reinforce it, make it active, make the T-cell traffic wherever they need to, to traffic, you can really generate what we call an immunogenic cell death, meaning the vaccine works and the T-cells, the lymphocytes, are able to come or to go wherever you want in the body to kill any new cancer cell. If this really works, the setting after radio and chemotherapy would be the best one because you have this cancer cell death. You have this immune system being, being awake. Uh, so that's really the setting of the Pacific trial. Pacific trial is using standard radio chemotherapy as defined by minimum of two cycle of chemo, minimum 50 gray, so the very normal standards, and proposes to a randomized patient between immunotherapy, an anti pdl one Durvalumab, for a year, or placebo for the other group. And the idea is to show, are you able to prove this biological mechanism of preventing or vaccinating the patients against the tumors or preventing the relapse of the tumor, but not only locally, or wherever it could happen in the body. And that was the question of Pacific, and I must say, um, this is really unprecedented in stage three, where we have been working unfortunately unsuccessfully in improving the, the prognosis, this really impacts strongly the outcome of these patients. It prolongs the progression-free survival of 11 months, which is really absolutely amazing, I must say, in the field of cancer in general, 11 months PFS is really very big. But also what I like in this trial is that it demonstrate the principle, the biological principle, because it also prevents the emergence of new metastasis in other organ. For example, in the brain, you reduce from 11% the percentage of patients relapsing in the brain to 5%. So you show that this story of vaccination works. You have creating a state where the patient can defend himself against the emergence of new lesions and new organs being affected by the disease. Well, the trial was proposing to take the therapy for a year, right? So the patients, most of them, because it's well tolerated, can continue up to a year. And I'm sure daily life data will tell us that it's absolutely feasible to give it uh, up to one year. Now, your value map can even be given every four weeks. So it's kind of an easy, an easy task. But um, afterwards, what we don't know is um, the ideal duration. This trial was telling one year. Maybe the next trials will let us know if it's maybe better to give two years or if it's be better to give, to give a shorter time. But now we know one year. So what happens? Then you stop and you control. You, s you just have a, a very kind of watchful waiting situation when you wait and wait um, by doing CT scans and observing the patient over time. Uh, that's probably uh, an interesting question to know that in advanced disease, we imagine that probably a bit more than a year might be useful. So this is a question for the next trials. In the Pacific trial, there was an attempt to try to identify the patients who benefit the most from this strategy, which it's, it's a complex one. You have to come for a year regularly to the hospital. Um, it was a failure. When I say that is in this, in this trial, quite a lot of patients had stage 3B, which is used to, to know, uh, is known to be not a good disease, more or less half-half, right? Stage 3 and stage 3B. And the benefit of giving Durvalumab maintenance was met in both subgroups. And I would say to the same magnitude. So you cannot select patients based on the real uh, extent of the disease initially. Then you can look at other subgroups. You can look at gender. You can look at uh, sub histological subtypes, squamous, non-squamous. You can look at the, at the real lymph node invasion. You can look at age. None of these subgroups were showing different results. So when you look at this famous forest plot, they all benefit, and they all benefit equally uh, of the strategy. But of more, more uh, I would say, 
the more important parameter in this subgroup analysis is trying to define a biological biomarker. In advanced disease, we use pdl one It's not a good biomarker, but that's the one we have at the time being. So pdl one predicts a benefit, uh, a higher benefit of immunotherapy checkpoint inhibitors in advanced disease. But in that situation where you give radiochemotherapy, so you completely change the microenvironment of the tumor by giving radiochemotherapy, you really modify everything. You create this vaccination and giving Durvalumab afterwards, the predictive ability of pd one looks like disappearing. So it means that the strategy is not dependent or not even better in high pd one patients. It's the same. So it probably means that by giving this radiochemotherapy, you make all the patients equal in the probability of developing an immune response. And it just means that at the time being, you are not able to select the best patient for the strategy as long as they don't have counterindication and they have a good performance status. I think this study uh, represents a, a tremendous breakthrough for us because we've been trying a number of different strategies, higher doses of radiation, more chemotherapy, newer chemotherapy agents, alternative uh, radiation fractionation schemes, none of which have made a big uh, breakthrough. And now we have a treatment combination which increases progression-free survival by 11 months, and that's really quite impressive. I think it's, setting a, it's a new paradigm and it's a new platform for us to expand, uh, improve the results further. What is particularly interesting to me is that um, it, we were treating patients with, when treating patients with immunotherapy with duvalumab, the local disease response in the radiated region was also improved. So it increased from 16 to about 28%. So it um, confirms a hypothesis that Chemoradiotherapy is a sort of in situ vaccine, which, if subsequently is exposed, if the patient is exposed to immunotherapy, it actually improves the local response. Um, that's a very impressive finding for radiation oncologists who, who focuses on local therapy. And the second uh, impressive uh, finding is the marked decrease in distant metastases. Half of the patients in the placebo arm got disease progression in the first 12 months. It gives an idea of what the magnitude of the challenge facing us is. So without better systemic therapy, whatever you do locally may be a bit irrelevant. So you now have duvalumab as an agent improving both local control and distant metastases. A third implication for radiation oncologists is that perhaps the role of radiation is just to avoid toxicity because higher doses are clearly not necessary because in the trial, the range was from 56 to 66 gray with an average about 60 gray. And that fits very nicely with the findings of the RTOG trial, which said that 60 gray is the standard. So we should not try and push the dose up because if patients get more esophagitis as a result of that, then they will delay their treatment and that's what in the quality of life data from the Pacific trial, which was presented at the uh, World Lung Cancer Conference, showed that patients may take quite a few months to recover from the esophagitis. So more radiation is actually not necessary, and we could do well with 60 gray and bringing in the effective immunotherapy as soon as possible. So I think it's also, uh, it's, it has a lot of major implications for the way we think about chemoradiotherapy. I think the standard chemoradiotherapy block is now defined for patients. And with this uh, chemoradiotherapy to about 60 gray, followed by 12 months of immunotherapy would be the new standard.